We must go to Dantooine to the Enclave. There is something there that you must hear, if you are to understand. I have no time for questions, and any answers will have to wait until we stand within the Enclave together. awaits. I will remain here. I am tired. The journey has been a long one, and I need to center myself. Know that much may happen here, but above all, do not forget this. You may trust in me. We cradle each other's lives, and what threatens one of us threatens us both. And if you find you cannot trust me, trust in your training, trust in yourself. Never doubt what you have done. 
All your decisions have brought you to this point. And now, perhaps, they shall see what you have. It is not as it was, but perhaps that is for the best. We were wondering when you would arrive. This moment has taken some time to reach us, and I imagine you have many questions. Or perhaps you have come for revenge. Now, we will do as we have done. We will wait. There's nothing else we can do. Now, the true threat has yet to show itself. It is waiting for something, us perhaps, to enter the war. We have seen their soldiers, the remnants of their fleet, but those are symptoms of a disease. It is more bait to attempt to draw us out. The actual battle is being fought through the force. Not with weapons of war. It isn't about the Republic anymore. The attack on Onderon. Something was attempting to use the planet itself. To feed on it. To draw on the power there. You prevented it, but it was a stalling measure. The next time will be critical. If Jedi gather, if we wage war against these shadows now, then Jedi will die. And we will die for nothing. Whatever this thing is, it must be fought by those strong in the Force. It cannot be fought in any other way. It knows this, and that is why it is killing us. If we die, then it will win, no matter what fleet or weapons are brought against it. I see you have failed to grasp the nature of the enemy we face. Where Jedi gather, Jedi die. But not just Jedi. All things touched by the Force. The last Jedi Conclave was on Qatar, a Miraluka colony, and all of Qatar was destroyed. All of the Jedi killed. Including Master Zar, Master Vandar. A Jedi doesn't care if he dies. Everyone does. But when we fight, when we sacrifice ourselves, it is for others, for the greater good. But our presence must not endanger others. And as long as we were visible targets, we were a threat to everything around us. We've been trying for years without success. Whatever disturbance in the Force that would cause death on such a scale also clouds it from our sight. It is like a scream in the Force, and finding its source is difficult. It has cast many echoes. So we sought out places touched by the Force, by such events. We went to Dantooine, to Telos, to Doxon. And some of us just left. We thought the enemy might show themselves. They were Sith, that much was certain. But where they were striking from, we did not know. You already know the answer. You've noticed it in those who travel with you. Have you noticed that when you act, others follow? Those that travel with you? They follow you without question. Without hesitation. Against their instincts, and sometimes against their sense. It is because you are a leader, but that still fails to grasp the meaning of what I'm trying to tell you. It is not an easy thing to explain. Sure, you are familiar with force bonds. It is the bond that develops between apprentice and master when one truly understands another. It is developed over time through understanding of each other. Yet you do it so easily, and we do not know why. You make connections through the Force, and it resonates with those who travel with you. The resonance is even greater when they, too, are Force-sensitive. Your actions affect others more than you know. You draw others to you, especially those strong in the Force. When you suffer, their spirit echoes it. And when they are in pain, their pain becomes yours. We do not know. But it is not the first time you felt the weight of so many lives. And that is why the Mandalorian Wars echo within you still. We did not cut you off from the Force. You were merely deafened to it.
because of that last battle of the Mandalorian Wars. The screams of countless thousands, Jedi and Mandalorians, crushed by the planet's gravity, annihilated. Their lives still scream across the surface of that dead planet, and within you, to hear the Force over such pain. It is not possible. It was too much for any Jedi to endure, and it is a wonder that you did not die there when thousands perished. All those you had fought with and struggled with. You cut yourself off because you had to if you were to survive. You had hints of it in the war on Doxum. Malachor was simply the final blow. You were deafened. At last, you could hear. You were broken. You were whole. You were blinded. And at last, you saw. When you returned to us, we saw what had happened. You carry all those deaths at Malachor within you. And it has left a hole, a hunger that cannot be filled. In you, we saw a wound in the Force. In you, we saw the end of the Force. Yes. You can feel the Force, but you cannot feel yourself. You are a cipher, forming bonds. Leeching the life of others, siphoning their will and dominating them. It is the teaching of these new Sith to feed on others, on other Force sensitives. They are symptomatic of the wound in the Force. You are a breach that must be closed. You transmit your pain, your suffering through the Force. Within you we see something worse than merely the teachings of the Sith. What you carry may mean the death of the Force. And the death of the Jedi. So you think. It is not the strength of a Jedi you feel. He's right. It's all the death you've caused to get here. You feed on it, and you grow stronger. You're like Malachor. It's in you, it's what you are now. You must have noticed as you fought across all these planets, killing hundreds, only to become more and more powerful. Why do you think that was? But what's worse is that bonding you have. It hasn't gone away. It's gotten stronger. And the more attachments you form, the more you draw others to you. And that is why you are a threat to us all. What if other Jedi went to war as you did, suffered the same events and emerged as you did? What if there was a crucible that trained such Jedi to consume and kill? Or you? Malachor was that crucible. What's worse is the Sith that we face. I fear that they have learned the lesson of Malachor all too well. It is what allows them to prey on Force users, to become stronger when Force sensitives are near. Somehow they have learned their hunger from you, and so you have brought about the end of the Jedi, and perhaps all the knowledge of the Force. But it is of no consequence. Your ability to make such connections, such bonds, so easily are why you cannot remain. You are a threat to living creatures and all who feel the Force. You will lead the Sith here, and that we cannot allow. Our judgment before remains. Exile. You must leave. And you must leave without your tie to the Force. It is a punishment reserved for only a few, and only when necessary. But we have the power to cut you off from the Force, and it must be done. Forgive us, but it is necessary. Do not be afraid. You shall feel no pain, but this must be done. As long as you feel the Force, you are a danger to those around you. Enough! Step away from him. What? Step away! He has brought truth, and you condemn it? The arrogance! You will not harm him. You will not harm him ever again. I thought you had died in the Mandalorian Wars. Die? No. Became stronger. Yes. Is this your new master exile? If so, then you follow Revan's path. Her teachings will cause you to fall as surely as he did. You sought to lure the Sith out, and now they have come to us. As you would pass judgment on him, 
I have come to pass judgment on you all. Do you wish to hear the teachings born of the Mandalorian Wars? Of all wars, of all tragedies that scream across the galaxy? Let me show you. You, who have forever seen the galaxy through the Force. See it through the eyes of the Exile. How could you ever hope to know the threat you face? when you have never walked in the dark places of the galaxy, faced war and death on such a scale. If you had traveled far enough, rather than waiting for the echo to reach you, perhaps you would have seen it for what it was. There is a place in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. It is something of the Sith, but it was fueled by war. It corrupts all that walks on its surface, drowns them in the power of the dark side, it corrupts all life, and it feeds on death. Revan knew the power of such places, and the power in making them. They can be used to break the will of others, of Jedi, promising them power and turning them to the dark side. Did you never wonder how Revan corrupted so many of the Jedi, so much of the Republic, so quickly? The Mandalorian Wars were a series of massacres that masked another war, a war of conversion, culminating in a final atrocity that no Jedi could walk away from, save one. And that is what I sought to understand. How one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But I see what happened now. It is because you were afraid. It is done. He is no more. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot.
Maiden took her. She thinks Kreia killed you. Because that's the lie Kreia told her, that's why. The only thing that matters is the Handmaiden believes it. And she's gonna react exactly how that old witch hoped she would. That's why she wanted the Handmaiden on board, you know. So she could use her to reach the Telos Academy whenever she wished, without needing the access codes. Yes, the Handmaiden knows who she is now. She'll take her to Telos, and Atrus will do what she'll do to anyone she thinks is a Sith. Are you surprised? All that talk of hatred, manipulation, and standing on your own two feet? Sorry, you don't get any more Sith than that. Still, if we were all judged by who we were in the past, I don't think you'd understand who we are now. Yeah, she will, if she can. Are you surprised? All that talk of hatred, manipulation, and standing on your own two feet? Sorry, you don't get any more Sith than that. Still, if we were all judged by who we were in the past, I don't think you'd understand who we are now. Yeah, I know. That's what I was afraid you'd say. What is wrong? Something troubles you. I can feel it. That is a strange answer. I do not understand. I would die for you. When I tell you my life for yours, it is my choice. And if there is an ending between us where my sacrifice can save you, it will be because it is my desire, not your will. I simply do. And sometimes there is no reason that can be given. What did you learn from the Jedi Academy? Then that is the danger of their beliefs. They do not understand you, what it means to be human. To lead. The feelings I have for you are because of what I see. What I hear in your voice. All that tells me you are a natural leader. I follow because I believe in you. I would die for you because I believe in you. And where they look at you and see the death of the Force. I look at you and see hope for all life. I look at you and see that perhaps a life untouched by the Force is not the punishment it is believed to be. I will understand if you feel you must go on alone. But I ask that you do not. Instead, take strength from your connection to others. Do not forsake them as you did in exile. He awaits you at Telos. If you go there, you must face him. And when you do, he will wound you, as he has wounded me. I ask you, I beg you, to stay here with me. I know, but I could not let you go without asking you this last time. I have never asked you for anything. I have fought alongside you, would have given my life to you many times over. And now there is something I must ask. I want to look upon you, where no one else can see. Where it is just us. I want to see your face, the color of your skin. I wish to see what the Handmaiden sees. When she looks at you, it causes her heart to race. What causes her to forsake her heritage, her oaths, as you made me forsake mine? I need to know if perhaps I am wrong. If the universe is not as my master once showed me. From the moment I heard your 
one voice across the galaxy. I have longed for you. It is the echo, a world that travels still, that went home, made me understand that there was another wounded as I was. One who had felt the same sense of loss. When I heard it, I loved you more than my own life. And I wanted you to be here with me for as long as you will let me love you. Stay. And I want you to see what I see when I gaze upon you. I want you to know why I cannot look at you and why I am drawn to you. Who is there? Who I am is not the question. I am Atris, Jedi Master. The last historian of the Jedi. The last of the Jedi. Those are titles, words you cling to as the darkness falls around you. You are that which has attacked the Jedi. You are Sith. Sith is a title, yes, but like you, the title is not who I am. It is not what I believe. For you, it is different. Know that there was once a Darth Traer, and that she cast aside that role, was exiled, and found a new purpose. But there must always be a Darth Traer, one that holds the knowledge of betrayal, who has been betrayed in their heart and will betray in turn. You have bathed in the knowledge of the Sith, but there is not enough truth in such teachings. But it will be a step for you. How did it happen? Search your heart. It was never battle that called to you, never battle that caused you to fall. Alicor V has touched many things and it casts its echoes still. Why did he betray me? You betrayed yourself. Do not blame the exile. And unlike you and I, there is still a chance that one may be saved. The one that you cast out. Where is the exile? I had thought... Oh, he will come. But it will be too late to save either of us. It is such a quiet thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. Your mistress awaits. She has much to share with you. The last of the handmaidens is before us. It is good that you have returned. You have much to answer for. What are you saying? You have betrayed us. You have betrayed Atris. You are no longer one of us. You followed the Jedi, betrayed your oath. Listen to me. Atris has been touched by the Sith. It is not too late for- Silence. It is a crime to kill blood, but not to kill a betrayer as you. Then you shall fall. Where have you been? You have been absent so long, I feared for your safety. Were you with the Exile all this time? Mistress, as you commanded, I... Commanded? Did I command you to consort with him? To follow his teachings, to betray your oath? Mistress, I do not understand. I... Of course you do not. But you will learn.
Enough. Did you have feelings for him? Did you touch him? Did you look upon him with love? There is no love in that one. He is a shell, devoid of emotion. All that he was died at Malachor, and he dies there still, as he should. So, one exile has arrived to save another. It is no crime to kill the Sith, or any that threaten the Republic, as you proved in the Mandalorian Wars. This is now my battle, and you are now my enemy. Such a noble offer. Your execution has been too long delayed, Exile. Enough. Did you have feelings for him? Did you touch him? Did you look upon him with love? There is no love in that one. He is a shell, devoid of emotion. All that he was died at Malachor, and he dies there still, as he should. One exile has arrived to save another. Do you care so much for her that you have come all this way? Perhaps you have feelings after all. Such a noble offer. Your execution has been too long delayed, Exile.
She said you would come here to this place. If you think you can defeat me here, you are wrong. All this collective knowledge, all these teachings of combat and the Force, they're mine to command. And if I must use it to end you, I will. Surrender. You need not die. Atris? That is not who I am. Not any longer. She has not existed for some time, I think. There was always something else within me. It just took time for its voice to be heard. The old woman you traveled with finally made me listen to myself, to the galaxy. She said that you would come here and that you would face me in battle. All the knowledge of the Sith gathered from across the galaxy, brought here by my servants so that I might uncover their secrets and use them to track them down. But now they have been drawn from the shadows of the Outer Rim and the only final matter to attend to is finishing you. I do not know, yet, but it does not matter. They have come here to face the Republic in battle and they will be destroyed. Yes, the Sith are here at last. You have brought them to this place as I had foreseen. It has all been part of my plans for you. And when I defeat you and the forces you have brought to Telos, I shall take the battle to the heart of the Sith and wipe them out forever. These Sith are cowards, striking from the shadows to kill Jedi. I needed a target to draw them out, but I could not risk my own life, all that remained of the Jedi. So I arranged for you to return to the Republic, leaked information of your past, and then waited for the Sith to come. And they did. But you came to Telos against my predictions. Now they are here, I can finally face this enemy and defeat them. Surrender to you, never. Let us end this. striking from you always knew these sith are spawned of you spawned by the mandalorian wars all those deaths all those jedi their power is to feed on life until nothing is left except a hollow galaxy echoing with the screams of the jedi lost to us yes i had thought she was awaiting me at that place but i see now that she lied it was not meant for me but for you she has gone there. She is waiting for you to travel to Malachor 5 to finish what you started. Yes, you are an echo in the Force. A hollow space where it has been wounded. It takes a great act of destruction to create such emptiness. But it can be done. It creates places where the Force is difficult to hear and difficult to find one's way. And you carry it with you, always. Now she seeks to create another echo, a wound in the Force, greater than the one before, greater than the one you caused. It will deafen all touched by the Force until no life is left. You were strong enough to withstand it once, but few have your strength in such matters, especially if they are unprepared. I do not know, but she needs you there. If you choose not to follow, she will murder herself at the heart of Malachor and you will die along with her. You are important to her somehow, but I...
slash Nora. But I do not know for certain. I do not know for certain. If there is a reason, you must discover it for yourself. And what will you do with me now? Abandon me here on this dead world? Or end my life as I wish to end yours? It does not matter. Not now. It is what I did with such pain that caused the wound. But I thank you. Leave now, while you can. Save Telos. Save the galaxy. Save yourself. You came for me. I thought I had lost you. She said the council had ended you, and all along she was one of those who had sought to kill us. When I heard her say that you were dead, I... I failed you. I let my emotion run through me and I acted without thinking. I wanted to punish her, hurt her, see her answer for what she had done to the Jedi for leading you to the council. Of course. Uh, forgive my display. I... I am the last of the Handmaidens no longer. I am Brianna, disciple of the last of the Jedi, and the one who will stand with you against all enemies who face us. It is good to hear it, after so long. <laughs> I didn't believe it when Lino reported the Ebon Hawk at Dock, but I guess it really has. Though given the trouble we've been having, maybe I shouldn't be surprised to see you. Lieutenant Grant, Sith forces have breached the module and are attempting to pen us up in the compound. Damn! Zeron, I need you and your men to break through and lead the assault. With pleasure, Lieutenant. All right, follow me. came out of nowhere. A fleet of warships dropped out of hyperspace, and before we could scramble fighters to intercept them, we were under attack. There were Sith fighters everywhere, and the few flights we sent out were barely launched when the bombardment began. We did our best, but we couldn't stop the landing craft that followed the initial wave. We couldn't hold back the Sith troops. We chose to retreat and began the evacuation instead. Then there's also the fuel situation. Because we don't have enough fuel, we won't be able to keep the station in orbit and operational and fight off the Sith at the same time. We'll try to make the best of what we have left, but it's going to be cutting it pretty close. The Sith numbers seem limitless, but we haven't lost all hope. We've heard reports that we might be receiving some assistance. A squad of troops sent by Queen Talia are currently trying to keep the Sith from sabotaging the station's fuel system. Does this mean you won't be putting us into force cages again? If you need to get to the Ravager, then you're gonna have to fight your way to the shuttle from here to the entertainment module, then make your way to the docking shuttle. Good luck. <laughs>